So welcome everybody to the Don't Miss the second round of PPP funding webinar presented by the Minority Business Development Agency in partnership with the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I want to remind everyone that this webinar is being recorded and that we're also going live on our USHC Facebook page. So we encourage you to please share this post right now if you're on Facebook so we can reach as many businesses as we can. As you know, the Paycheck Protection Program, also known as PPP, is an extremely relevant topic for many businesses that have been affected by this pandemic. And today we will learn about all the latest updates on this program. We also want to encourage all the attendees to please submit any questions to our panelists via the Q&A box if you are on Zoom. And if you are on Facebook, please submit your question as a comment. We will be addressing all your questions during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Now, now I would love to start the webinar by giving a warm welcome to our CEO and president at the US Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Ramiro Cavazos. Welcome, Ramiro. Thank you so much, Laura. And it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for your powerful work to uh, reach out to our uh, nation's small business community and minority business community. There are more than 30 million small businesses in America and at least 5 million are Hispanic owned businesses. And there's no question uh, that we are living through challenging times, but there's also opportunity. And I wanna thank our friends from the Minority Business Development Agency. And of course, uh, our board of directors, the uh, board is chaired by Alice Rodriguez, uh, who herself is in the financial services area with uh, JP Morgan Chase and are more than 260 Hispanic chambers. We're only as strongest as our weakest link. And I am very proud to say that each of our Hispanic chambers throughout the country and in Puerto Rico represent uh, the best of advocacy. And each of them is an economic oasis to share information about access to capital, but more especially the CARES Act, the Paycheck Protection program and the tremendous uh, opportunity we have to put that capital in the hands of our hardest to serve, our smallest of the smallest businesses. So we're very honored to be here with Marvin today. Thank you, Marvin, in advance. I know you'll be introduced formally. And I wanna thank Stephen also, uh, who will be um, as our consultant in economic development, helping guide us forward with these assets. So Laura, thank you on behalf of our board of directors, our great staff, and our chamber network around the country, small business is our number one priority. And as we provide the capital that they need through the Paycheck Protection Program, we wanna be here to be helpful to prevent guide, provide guidelines in English and Spanish to also help them get business for their small businesses. So with that, thank you so much to each of you that have joined us. It is our pleasure to work for you. And my name is Ramiro Cavazos and your president and CEO is my privilege to serve you and each of our small businesses throughout our country. With that, Laura, I'll give this back to you. We look forward to a, a great program. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Muchas gracias a ti también, Ramiro. Now, I would love to introduce our panelists for today's webinar. Marvin uh, Lyman, director at the Denver CARES Act Assistance Program. He is joining us today and he actually made possible this webinar. So thank you so much for all your help, Marvin. Welcome. Thank you, Laura. We are so happy to work with the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We appreciate Ramiro uh, for extending just such a grace, gracious hospitality to us and allowing us to uh, help bring this uh, great event to people who can get assistance for their businesses. Uh, we, you know, we are delighted to hear from the, the special guests that we have. Uh, we know that the information that will be shared uh, will help the dollars get to Main Street, to real businesses like ours that we're used to in our community. So we're excited about that. And again, we thank you. So on behalf of the CARES Act Assistance Program and the Denver MBDA, thank you very much for co-hosting with us. Thank you so much, uh, Marvin. And now I would love to introduce our main speaker for today. His name is Stephen Denny, and he's the principal at Innovative Business Advisors, LLC. 
Welcome, Stephen. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and presenting on such important topic as the Paycheck Protection Program and all the updates. Well, Laura, thank you very much. I'm honored that you all would have me, and I am especially honored that Mr. Cavazos would join us today and provide that gracious introduction. And Marvin, I know his group does such amazing work, and um, I'm very grateful that uh, he would also uh, recommend me over to you guys. So there's a lot of really, really positive developments within the Paycheck Protection Program, and it is specifically designed to help the low and moderate income communities and the minority businesses. And uh, we've got a lot of specific information that we're gonna be sharing with you today. And of course, we're, as Laura had said earlier, we're delighted to answer your questions as they come up. So with that, let me just dive right into the, uh, into the presentation here. Wonderful. Uh, and and Stephen, while you are doing that, I'm going to try to launch this poll, asking a question to all the participants, please. If you could answer these questions in the next 10 seconds, that will be great. Have you received any of the following PPP loans uh, the, uh, during the first round or the second round? Thank you so much for your quick responses. I see that almost 80% of the people have received already their first round PPP uh, loans. Uh, so I think that's great information. And only 25% of the participants have received the second round. Um, so I think this is good information uh, for you, Stephen, too. Yeah, Thank you so excellent. much for responding, everyone. Excellent. That's very helpful. So yes, the second round is now available. If you've received the first round, um, you do not have to be granted forgiveness in order to apply for the second round. So you don't have to wait for forgiveness. So if there's some reason why you might be waiting to apply for a second round, please, uh, please don't do so. I'm going to touch on a couple of the SBA loan programs just to give the audience a, a little bit of background in some of the loan programs that are available. And then we're going to dive right into the PPP in detail, there have been some very significant changes that have taken place over the last couple of weeks. And uh, there will be many things I think that could potentially help uh, the community as a whole. So I'm honored to be able to share that. And then um, finally, we're going to talk a little bit about the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program, which is another program that the SBA is delivering as a part of the Economic Aid Act that was the adjunct to the CARES Act, which originally started uh, the whole PPP program last year in March in relation to uh, or in response to this pandemic. So with that, let me dive in first off to the SBA loan programs and say that if you have a business that operates in any of these industrial classifications, the new Economic Aid Act, which is the law that was passed on December 27th and signed by, by uh, the then president, that highlighted the fact that there were specific businesses that had suffered uh, uh, much more than many other businesses. And thus they were classified as underserved businesses from the standpoint of needing aid. So the, the congressional leaders highlighted these particular business entities as those that probably needed the most support. And as a result of that, as it relates to SBA loans, and you'll think about there are really three primary SBA loans. There's a, a 504 loan, which is typically used to buy real estate or heavy equipment. There is also a 7A loan, which can be used to either start or buy a business, can be used to expand a business, can be used for working capital in the business, which is, and the 7A is the most pre prevalent uh, SBA product. And then there are also express loans that are available for smaller amounts. Um, but if you're in, in any of these underserved businesses and you go out and take a new SBA loan right now, the SBA will make your first 11 payments for you. So that's not a deferment. It is simply a, a gift of making the first 11 payments for you. So in many regards, when you think about SBA lending, SBA lending can be very, very helpful for Main Street businesses. It's designed specifically for Main Street businesses. And when you're in a position where that can make your first 11 months of payments for you, that, uh, that makes that help, I think, even more important than it's ever been before. A couple of other key terms related to SBA lending programs. 
First off, the SBA now has raised the guarantee to 90%. What this means is that banks now, um, if, if the worst case scenario happened and you're not able to repay the SBA loan, the bank doesn't lose. The bank gets 90% uh, guarantee from the federal government. So, and because of the fact that there is such a, a, a a big guarantee for the lenders, you know, they are certainly incentivized to go out and provide more loans. And that was the design of the program. In addition to that, for the first time that, uh, that I can remember in many, many years, they've also um, stopped all of the fees associated with SBA loans. So in the past, if you've ever taken an SBA loan, you would have had to pay an SBA guarantee fee up front or that fee could have been rolled into the loan. And typically that amounts to somewhere between two and two and a half percent of the loan balance. But right now, all those fees are suspended. So uh, very, very good time to take an SBA loan if in fact you need a loan to help grow or rebuild your business. The other thing is all of these incentives come to you without tax consequence. So there will never be a 1099 that's sent to you that says you're gonna to have to pay income tax on this gift of 11 payments or because of the fact that they waive the guarantee fee or any of these other special terms. So it's a nice, very nice uh, incentive to be able to utilize SBA lending should you be in a position where your business could use it. So those are a couple of key things that I just wanted to highlight on the SBA lending platforms. Let me flip over and begin to talk a little bit about the Paycheck Protection Program. So uh, what you see on the screen is as of last Monday, the total amount of lending that has been approved so far on uh, the Paycheck Protection Program. And you can see that it's $156 billion so far year to date and over 2.194 million businesses have already received uh, PPP lending. So if there's some reason why you're waiting for a second round, I would encourage you to get involved because the PPP program is due to stop lending as of the last day of March of this year. So we, uh, well, we've only got a few weeks left. This will also give you a breakdown of how that lending has taken place. And you can see that uh, there's been a pretty significant amount of first draw loans, and there's been a pretty significant amount of second draw loans as well. One of the things that the current administration has done is really focus on low and moderate income uh, businesses and businesses that are located in low and moderate income marketplaces. So if you're in one of those location specifically, there are some very special incentives for you to uh, participate. And as you can see, they are keeping score. They're, uh, they're, they're keeping a very good count on how many businesses fall within that particular criteria. So let me transition and talk about some specifics of the PPP program. So the, um, the SBA issued what's called an interim final rule uh, last week, and they made some significant changes. The first changes that they made was they created six new forms. So there is now, as of uh, uh, last week, a new PPP borrower form that you must use for either first draws or if you are a Schedule C filer. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about Schedule C filers. Generally, that means if you're a sole proprietor, an independent contractor, or a, a small company that's, op that's operated and organized as a sole proprietorship. Uh, there is also a new application if you need to take a second draw PPP form and for second draw Schedule C filers. And you'll see why that's important in just a few minutes as we get into some of the most recent changes. In addition to that, there are a couple of lender application forms. This is not necessarily all that important for you as a potential borrower, um, but the one question you wanna ask your lender is, are you up to speed on the most recent um, on the most recent changes to the PPP, and are you a, a licensed uh, lender in that regard? So, one thing that I don't think is well known, and maybe your audience might find this surprising, 
but you do not have to go to the bank that you currently use in your business to, uh, to get a PPP loan. You can use any bank or lending institution that's authorized to do PPP lending. So you first off, you don't have to go to the existing bank that you use in your business. Obviously, it can make it somewhat easier for you if you do use your existing bank, but you don't necessarily have to be, have to be restricted to that. The second thing is you can make as many applications for a PPP loan with various lenders as you like but the law says you can only take one loan. So for example, the reason why I say this is very important is if, let's say for the sake of example, you're, you're dealing with a very large national bank and you find that they are being very slow and unresponsive and you feel like you're not getting good uh, satisfaction from them, you are free to go to any bank in town that provides PPP lending. You do not have to be restricted to your existing bank in that regard. And unfortunately, there are a lot of cases of people that were waiting on their banks to help them and they missed the opportunity. So my, uh, my, my number one insider secret that I would like to share with you is don't wait on the bank. Go make multiple applications. If you don't think the bank is operating in your best interest or is operating as quickly as you would like them to, go talk to other banks. And the first one that approves your application can make that loan to you. And just remember, you can't take more than one loan. It would be against the law to take more than one loan, but you can apply as many places as you would like. So that's, uh, that's a little insider secret that hopefully will be helpful to the audience. Let's talk a little bit about some of the significant changes that have taken place as of the last couple of weeks. So the first thing is that uh, they have stopped taking applications from just any businesses. They have narrowed the applications over the last two weeks to specifically businesses that have less than 20 employees, uh, and that's counted on either a full-time, part-time, or seasonal basis. So what the, what the, uh, um, the Small Business Administration is doing right now is they're trying to make sure that the smallest of businesses actually get served first. And so even if you're a larger um, business in the community that might have 100 or 200 or 300 employees, they're asking those to step aside and wait in line and let the smaller businesses uh, apply first. Now that application restriction ends as of the close of business tomorrow. So you need to act quickly and make sure if you're interested in applying for a PPP, now is a great opportunity for you to do so, if you, and particularly if you fit within the category Category of having less than 20 employees. The next big change is for Schedule C filers. And again, if you file your tax returns on a Schedule C as a business, this would apply to you. And the one new thing that we've highlighted here is you must provide a copy of that and supply that, that Schedule C from last year with your application form. But there is a big benefit for you to do this now because they've modified the rules a little bit. And if you had taken a PPP loan in the first draw last year, this would not have applied, but now it does. And it, and it makes the amount of borrowing that you are potentially uh, available to have much greater. What they have done is they've said, if you have zero employees or if you have you know, a, uh, several employees, less than 20, you are able to calculate either your PPP loan amount based on the net profit of your business or based on the gross income of your business, which are two very different things. So for the sake of example, I'm just gonna flip over to the Schedule C. The gross income is calculated, just to remind our, our everybody in our audience, the gross income is all the gross receipts of your business less the cost of goods sold. So from that, you get the gross income of your business. Now that might be a much larger number than if you take that gross income then and reduce all the expenses of your business, what you now see on the bottom here. So basically what it amounts to is the difference between being able to, you as a borrower, being able to calculate your loan based on either line 31 or line seven 
of your Schedule C. And in many instances, we find that uh, particularly if you're a sole proprietor, the gross income line might be more uh, a much larger number, which gives you the ability to, to get a larger PPP loan. So take a look at that for your particular business and you as a borrower get to choose which way you go. You can't, you can't do both. You gotta make a choice either based on gross income or net profit, one of the two. If you have multiple employees in your business, uh, you have got those same two options, but there are a couple of additional formulas that you got to use in that regard. But keep in mind that if you have already been approved for a PPP loan, you cannot go back and increase that loan amount right now. So this is really important for that part of the audience, Laura, that said that they hadn't yet taken that second draw. So now hopefully this will help them be able to see that they've got two ways of doing the calculation and potentially have more money available to them. The other uh, very significant change for small businesses like this is that the federal government has set aside a billion dollars specifically for Schedule C filers that have no employees and are located in that low and moderate income area. So if your business has a zip code that fits within one of those LMI census locations and your local SBA office should be able to tell you that pretty, pretty quickly, then uh, there's a special pool of funds that are set aside just to help businesses like yours in that area. So we talked about Schedule C. Again, take a look and figure out, pull your Schedule C out if this describes your business. Figure out, is it to your advantage to use the gross income calculation or is it to your advantage to use the net profit calculation? And then you can make uh, the decision that best suits your business. Another very significant enhancement is they have made some um, in the past, there have been many restrictions on who can get an, a PPP and who cannot. And one of the things that uh, always was in place in the past is if you as the owner of the business had a felony conviction in the last five years, you automatically were not eligible to, uh, to get PPP loans. Now what they've said is that They've restricted that just to say, if you had a felony conviction, let's say for the sake of example that you had a drug related conviction, right? Maybe you, maybe you had a, uh, in, before the laws changed, maybe you had an old conviction for marijuana or something like that. And uh, that is on your record as a felony conviction. Now they're saying that any borrower that has a felony conviction that is not fraud related, and that would fraud related conviction would be embezzlement or, or having to do with um, putting the wrong information on your applications or you know, lying regarding your financial performance and things like that, tax fraud. But any of the other type of, of nonviolent felony violations would not keep you out. So if you're in a position like that and um, you've got a fraud, con or excuse me, a felony conviction, but it's non-fraud related, now you are not uh, excluded. You are able to apply and will be approved. So that's a big change. I don't think the I don't think the SBA has ever done that before. The other thing that's a huge change is for student loan delinquencies. So one of the things that um, the SBA said in the past, just as recently as two months ago, is if you were delinquent, either delinquent being behind or had stopped paying your student loans altogether and were in default on your student loans, because of the fact that you were delinquent on a government loan, you were not able to use the Paycheck Protection Program uh, aid programs to your advantage. But now they have come out and said, we're gonna suspend that related to student loans. So there are, we've seen instances where there were business owners that had co-signed for some of their kids on student loans. And their, uh, and their kids were actually delinquent. And as the co-signer, they are also deemed to be delinquent in that regard as well. So there might be situations now whereby you may have been prohibited from getting a PPP in the past because of a student loan delinquency. Well, Congress has, uh, or I should say the, the Small Business Administration has set that aside and they've said that will not keep that, that will not keep you from a loan from this point forward. 
Um, and they are going back and saying they're going to retroactively apply that to any PPP loan in the past. So if you made application and were rejected, um, they are saying that you will now be approved. So it would be in your best interest if you had experienced that to go back and, uh, and make reapplication and, and make sure that you have access to those, those funds now. The other huge change was in the past, they said you had to be a US citizen to take advantage of the PPP loans. Now they have opened it up for all non-citizen owners, provided that you are a lawful US resident and you do have an individual taxpayer identification number. So again, there's, I know that uh, there are many, many businesses that are owned by folks that are non-citizens, but do have lawful US residents. So uh, in the past, those folks were, uh, were uh, excluded from the PPP. Now they are available again to take advantage of, uh, of PPP lending. And then finally, um, they have added a whole bunch of demographic information to the application. So what used to be a relatively simple fill in three boxes, check some, check some other statements and then sign your name at the bottom. Now the application has become a little bit more complicated, but just uh, for the benefit of the audience, we're gonna take and go through it and make sure that it's very clear for you. So the first part of the application asks you to check what type of business you are put in your basic business name, trade name, contact information, et cetera. Excuse me. And then the, the standard three boxes were down below. What was your average monthly payroll? And then you multiplied that by either 2.5 or 3.5 if you were in the food service or accommodations marketplace. And uh, that would that would detail the total amount that you are requesting as a borrower. And then you would add in the number of your employees. And then they, they've got uh, some boxes down here where you can check what the purpose of the loan is. One, uh, another insider secret, remember the name of the loan is the Paycheck Protection Program. So be sure and always check that you're gonna use some of the loan for payroll costs. Uh, because if you say you only check the rent or mortgage interest box, um, you may not be able to get the loan in that regard. So be sure that you pay attention to that. And remember that the whole purpose of the program is for you to use the money to help cover your payroll costs in your business. The second side of the form asks you to detail who are the owners of the business that have 20% or more interest in the business. And then uh, you've got to provide the demographic information that we talked about before, which is a new addition to the form. So relatively simple information, uh, but you got to make the you got to make some selections now. And then finally, on the back side of the application, there are a whole series of nine questions that you've got to answer, and uh, it gives you tells you up above if you answer yes to one, two, five, or six your loan will not be approved. However, um, most of the time you're gonna, uh, you know, these things wouldn't apply. You probably wouldn't be standing in line for these if, if you were answering yes in any of those areas anyway. So pretty, pretty simple application, not quite as simple as it used to be, um, but generally pretty simple to, to, to get it in place now. And generally these application forms are used by every lender. So the vast majority of lenders are using the standard SBA forms. Some lenders have created their own forms, but, uh, but what we've seen in the Midwest at least is the, the vast majority of the, of the lenders are using the SBA forms. Particularly if you're going to a local community bank or a local credit union and utilizing them as the potential lender for you in these programs. Those are almost always uh, using SBA forms. So that's a little bit of an overview on the PPP side. Let me flip over and talk a little bit about the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, which is a very significant program. What the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant is designed to do is help live music and cultural event centers, museums, theaters, um, cinemas, uh, any live music venue that has been closed as a result of the pandemic. Um, 
and you were in operation as of February 29th in 2020, you would automatically apply. This is a pretty amazing program. If you have one of these type of businesses, what they are talking about here is not a loan, but a straight out grant. And the amount of that grant is calculated to be approximately 45% of what your total gross revenues were in 2019. So it can be a very significant amount of money up to a maximum of $10 million. And, um, and this doesn't come with any loan provisions and no, no, pre, no repayment uh, provisions whatsoever. It does have a couple of qualifications and we're gonna give you a couple of secrets about how to uh, begin to apply for this if this describes your business. So first and foremost, you had to be in operation as of February 29th. Remember that you cannot apply for and receive a PPP loan after 1227 and also get the shuttered venue operators grant. Now, the reason for that is because in that Economic Aid Act, which was passed and, and signed into law on December 27th, that's when the whole shuttered venue operators grant came into being. But basically, the law says if you, tr if you try and take a, a PPP loan or a second draw PPP loan after that period of time, then you would not be eligible to take the shuttered venue operators grant. So you got to be careful. If this is your type of business, live music, cinema, movie theater, uh, museum, art center, anything like that, you have to be careful that you might apply for a PPP, which enables you to get three and a half times your payroll cost, but that's going to be a small fraction of what might be available to you under the shuttered venue operators grant. So pay very close attention to that. Documentation is going to be required here. It's going to be a much more intensive application process than the PPP. They have not released the forms yet. Um, as soon as they do, we'll have them out on our website for available, as I'm sure you will be able to get them from every small business center, uh, every minority development center, and I'm sure the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce will also have them available as well. Uh, but there is a key provision here. Um, in order to apply for the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, you're going to have to register in what's called the SAM system, which is the government's uh, procurement system. And in order to register in the SAM system, your business has to have a Dun & Bradstreet number. So I wanted to provide both of these links here. If, you, if this is your type of business oper operation and you don't know whether or not you have a DUNS number for your company, First thing you can do is go to this website and type in information regarding your business and Dun & Bradstreet will tell you if you have been issued a Dun & Bradstreet number at any time in the past. If you have, you can print a copy of that record and keep that number with you because then you will need to take that number and go over to the government SAM system and start a registration application there. And you will need that DUNS number to complete your application process. So wanted to just to provide that again as another insider's tip for you. We strongly recommend that if you're in this type of business, go ahead and make sure to get your DUNS number, go ahead and get registered in the SAM system because this program will be opening up in the very near future. And uh, you'll wanna be first in line in order to uh, take advantage of the program that is available to you there. So I'm getting near to the end here. And I just wanna say that there is also this very nice and convenient uh, chart, which is available here on these slides that can tell you if you are a PPP recipient and you've already had a first draw, you know, can you apply for the second draw? The answer is yes. You may also apply for an EIDL if you haven't already. And you may apply for a, a, a shuttered venue operators grant if in fact that type of business applies to you, but you probably don't want to if you are also gonna plan to take advantage of the shuttered venue operators grant. So as you can see in the second, second section there, for those that are planning to use the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, you're, you really are not eligible to apply for the PPP loan, but you may also utilize the EIDL program. And then uh, for those of you that have used the EIDL, this will 
kind of show you, are you also eligible to use PPP and SVOG? And generally the answer to that is yes, you can. So that uh, takes me to the end of the presentation. We're gonna make these slides available to uh, the US uh, uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and um, that will be available for you to refer to. I'm providing our contact information here you can go to our website at innovativeba.com and you'll find our entire team, including uh, myself and all of my contact information. We would be delighted to engage with you free of charge if you'd like to call us and have any particular questions that we might be able to answer for you as well. And uh, Laura, with that, I will uh, turn, the, turn the controls back over to you. Here we are. Okay, thank you so much, Stephen. That was great. Um, I think this this is this was a perfect overview of 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 all these these updates that we have been hearing about. Um, let me um, let me stop. Uh, do you mind just stop uh, sharing your screen, Stephen? Of course. So that we can go on gallery view. Um, and we're gonna go over now uh, to our Q&A session. And please, if you have not submitted your question yet, please do so now so that um, we can take advantage of Stephen, of our expert here answering all the questions that you may have. So we have here one person that is asking, uh, my second round loan was denied on an obscure technicality. Um, uh, and maybe uh, which even the bank officer was unaware. So he's asking, given that my business qualifies for the new loan amount, gross income, should I just apply, apply again? And disregard yes. the application that was denied before? Yes, so the answer is yes. Yes, and they would, the SBA would have issued an error code and that the, uh, your banker should be able to help you fix whatever that error code is. So um, all denied applications come with an error code and, they, and you should be able to get that done. But again, remember, you can always go to another bank and reapply. Correct, correct. And, and we, uh, for example, if someone of course was not successful at getting a response yet from a bank that they have applied for, do you have any recommendations? We have heard a lot about just going with the smaller banks, local banks, any other suggestions, Stephen? Yeah, that's excellent advice. The community banks, there's a special set aside for community banks too, the smaller local banks and credit unions. So they have a special set aside and um, they are usually much faster at putting the information in because what, what happens is the bank has to take your application, then they have to turn around and type it into the uh, SBA portal. And sometimes if you're at a big bank, they might have a whole stack of applications that they're working through and it might take them, you know, days or, or, or certainly hours to get yours in the system. So going to another institution might get your business into the system quicker, which can get you a decision much quicker. Wonderful. And, and please remember to use the Q&A uh, box to submit your questions. But I think this is a question probably that a lot of people have. If I didn't apply for the first PPP loan, am I still eligible for the first one and the second one? Yes, you are. You're still eligible for both of them. But remember that the, the program is going to close the end of this month. So it would be very difficult for you at this point to actually get two loans, but you could certainly get the first loan. Okay, wonderful. So uh, that was a question that we received on the chat. And uh, yes, we want to remind everyone that the deadline to apply is March 31, 2021. So please keep that in mind as it's very important. Um, People are asking, where can I download the, PP, download the PPP application? Do I get it from the bank or do I download it online? And I think this goes to the very basic questions. Let's assume that I'm a musician, you know, and I was doing my taxes every year. Where do I go, right? So if you could just go very basic here, Stephen, and they missed the first round of the PPP and they want to apply, maybe what directions will you give them? 
What I would say is the only thing you need to do is print a, or bring a copy of your Schedule C and just go to any lender and, um, and you can call them, call the ones that are closest to you first off on the phone and just ask them the question over the phone. Are you guys authorized to do PPP lending? And they will tell you yes or no. And if the answer is yes, just take your application and go down to them. Not, excuse me, not the application. Take your Schedule C, typically, a copy of your tax return. They will have the applications. If you want to be very well organized and bring it all in complete, you can go to sba.gov. To, their, to the SBA website and all of the documentation, including all the application forms are on sba.gov. Uh, if you're familiar with your local SBA district office or your minority business development office, um, you can also go, typically their websites will also have the applications on them as well. So you can download them, download the instructions and um, you know read through it beforehand before you go to the bank. Excellent. That, that, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Uh, fantastic. So, you know, if you did your taxes, you, you have that Schedule C because a lot of people don't even know what a Schedule C is. <laughs> <laughs> so it is important. It is important. Um, okay, wonderful. So um, we talk about the deadline and can I use PPP funds to pay expenses like rent and utilities? Yes, you can. In addition to rent and utilities, you can also use PPP funds to cover cost of goods sold. You can use it to cover your software expense of your business. So if you're paying for QuickBooks, if you're paying for a payroll service provider, if you're paying for you know some kind of a, a menu, online menu system or something like that, you can also pay software expenses with it. And um, you can also pay for any of the PPE, the personal protection equipment that you have to provide for your employees or for changes that you may have had to make to your business as in relates to putting PPE protection in place. And um, yes, so it, it is a much broader range of expenses that you can now use PPP funds for than last year when the, fir when the program first came out. Mm -hmm. And something really important that, that you pointed out during the presentation was that even though you have all these expenses that you're planning to use this loan for, it's important to still check that box that says payroll. Like, that's kind of mandatory, right? Something to keep in mind if you are completing that form. Or maybe you are there um, at the bank, at your local bank, and they are asking you just the question, where are you planning to spend the money? And maybe that person at the bank doesn't know that based on what you have told us that payroll should be required. So always keep that in mind, go with that in mind, payroll check plus all the other expenses that you may be considering. And remember that payroll includes the owner's payroll too. It's not just your employee's payroll, but it's the owner's payroll too. Correct, correct. Um, companies started in 2020, but prior to COVID, are not eligible for any funds? Companies so, that started in 2020, but prior to COVID. Are so um, companies that started in 2020 prior to COVID, mm -hmm. generally, they, the, generally the law recognizes the date of the February um, uh, 29th of, uh, of um, 2020 as the date as we saw on the on the shuttered venues operator grant program um i'm yeah yeah I'm, I'm right about that here's the thing if your business started or if you bought a, an existing business after that date there are special provisions that apply as well so um you can go take a look at that because you would still potentially be uh, available for a first round PPP loan if your business was economically injured due to the pandemic. Uh, and you would definitely be eligible for a second round PPP. And remember that the qualifier there is that your business had to have a loss in revenue of 25% or greater in any single quarter over the course of the last year. So, so yes, um, you could uh, you could potentially apply uh, if those conditions were met. You, you mentioned you said twenty nine percent. Twenty five. Twenty five percent. 
a yep. loss of revenue of 25 percent or more in any quarter not for the year as a whole but in any particular quarter okay perfect um yeah, is PPP only available to U.S. citizens? And I think that's something that you cover. Not anymore. Yeah, it's available to non-U.S. citizens as well. Correct. And to be more specific, you can have only a resident card, a green card, basically, and you can still apply. And mm -hmm. even if you don't have a green card and you only have a ITIN number, yep. correct, you can also apply. That's correct. So I think that's that's very important. And again, these these are one of the changes that were made and updates that we were covering during the presentation. Just made those changes were just made in the last few weeks. So that's brand new stuff. Correct. Yes, we're coming with the latest and greatest. Yes. So that's why you need to share this video, please, if you are on Facebook, or uh, of course, we're going to share the recording with all the people that have registered along with the presentation. So you can also share it with your colleagues and friends so everybody can benefit from this conversation. Um, if we did get, oh, there was a question here. Is the EIDL a grant or a loan? I think that's something a very... So there were two components to the EIDL. When you made, if you made application for an EIDL, which is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, when you made the application, there was a box that you could check that would that's asked, would you like to be eligible for an EIDL grant? And what happened was last year, Congress, or excuse me, the SBA ran out of funds for the grant portion of the program, but they still had funding to do the loans. So if you received an EIDL grant, which would have been many people received $1,000 or $1,000 per employee, up to a maximum of $10,000. If you received an EIDL grant, it is exactly that. It's a grant. You don't have to repay it and there are no loan documents in associated with it. If you received an EIDL loan, uh, that would have been a long-term, typically 30-year, very low interest rate loan where you would not be making payments for the first 12 months. So your first payment is due on month 13 after you receive the loan. But there are two different programs there. Okay. Yes, I think it's important to clarify that. Two different programs. Uh, uh, interesting question. Are escape the rooms type businesses, type, uh, type of business quali that qualifies uh, for the shutter venue program? Are you familiar with escape the rooms? Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but if you go to sba.gov, um, and you click on the COVID aid button, there's a whole page that talks about um, shuttered venue operator grants because th there are uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of businesses that are that are like live venue v businesses that are not included. It depends upon what percentage of your revenue is basically ticket revenue um, into the event. But there's a there are a lot of explanations on that page, and and I would recommend they go to that page to to learn more about that. Yeah, good idea. And I share that link uh, on the chat. So please click on the link and you will find that specific section. Um, Judith Canales is asking for sole proprietors and other small businesses who have 20 employees or less, if they miss the deadline tomorrow, yep. right? Uh, can they apply generally by the end of March? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. yes. You can definitely, the, the, what they did is they said anybody greater than 20 employees could not apply until after tomorrow. So they had set aside um, basically two weeks just for um, businesses of 20 employees or less to give them an opportunity to get in line ahead of the others. Wonderful. And Dennis Garcia is asking, what period do we use for average monthly payroll? Okay, so generally, if you are, depending upon what, um, if you're a Schedule C, depending upon whether you're going to use gross or total income, in those, if you're a Schedule C filer, you would take, you know, that either line 7 or line 31 amount, you would divide it by 12, and that would give you your average monthly, right? If you're a larger company where you have a, a, a more detailed payroll, 
then typically you would add up your total payroll expense over the course of the last year again and just divide that by 12 and they would multiply it by 2.5 or remember that restaurants food services and accommodation businesses are able to use a multiplier of 3.5 okay and i just want to remind everyone also that uh, I, if you register for the webinar you will receive all this information plus Steve, uh, Stephen Dennis contact information and he's more than happy to answer any questions that you may have that we were not able to answer or if you wanted to go more in detail regarding your specific scenario. Um, I know we have only a few a few minutes left, maybe less than 10 minutes. Um, uh, well, they are asking here, if I apply for the first EADL loan, do I have to apply for second EADL loan or am I automatically or am I automatically eligible? Okay, so EIDL yeah. loan, there's only one. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm saying. So understanding. the EIDL, there's only one. But if they apply for the first PPP, they yes, they have to apply for the second PPP as well. Mm -hmm. You have to make application. Okay. And if they did apply for the uh, EIDL loan, can they apply for the second round PPP? Yes, they can. For the PPP in general, for both? Yes, they can. I would strongly encourage them to apply for both. Okay. Okay, so I think we cover most of the questions. Marvin, I know that you have also uh, probably been receiving a lot of questions regarding PPP uh, uh, from, from people that contact you at the Denver um, MBDA Cares Program Center. Uh, do you want to share or you want to ask any specific questions or maybe a question that you think we we didn't receive today, but it's, it's a question that you always get and that we have not answered today, maybe? Well, I think, uh, Stephen, I mean, he was pretty, he was very thorough. Uh, and, you know, a week ago or so when we talked with, with Stephen and had a similar webinar, he had a lot of updates. Uh, it just goes to show you that uh, the information is constantly being updated. And so I, I think the only thing that I can share, which Stephen has stressed, uh, is that, you know, you, you cannot access any of these dollars if you do not apply. This program was created to assist small businesses. And Congress really listened to the mistakes that were made the first time around. And as, as Stephen had said in, in a previous webinar, I mean, this is this effort is unprecedented. I mean, we've never seen we've never seen this effort before to this degree, just like this. And so I would just encourage everyone that is listening, tuned in, that watches this uh, recording, make sure that you apply it by the deadline. Uh, you do not want to miss out on this opportunity. Who knows if another round will come if needed. So make sure you take advantage of it. And yeah. if you have any questions, contact Stephen. He is an authority on this matter. And we truly appreciate him uh, for taking time to share. Yeah. And, you know, Stephen, I, I think I missed a question that says there are no lenders in the Navajo Nation, Na Navajo Nation, only banks located near the Navajo Nation. It is not convenient for Navajo owned small business owners to travel to parameter cities and banks. How uh, does the SBA can help? Isn't that, this is connected to what you were saying that they don't really need to go to their local banks, but they can just apply maybe through PayPal or other yeah, and actually, and actually, PayPal is doing it as well, I believe. So, yes, and there are, um, I actually saw a bulletin, there is some special emphasis for Navajo, uh, for Navajo Nation borrowers as well. I don't have the details of that with me today, but if you would go to the sba.gov uh, website or reach out to your local SBA office, I'm sure someone in your local office is probably much more familiar with that. But yes, you're absolutely right, Laura. You can go to use any lender anywhere. You are not geographically restricted by to, uh, to any particular lender. Okay, wonder, wonderful. And, and I think, you know, the uh, for any for those that have never applied for the PPP, I think you just gave such a good advice, a great overview, great updates. And the important thing is that if you have your Schedule C or if you had uh, done your taxes, uh, that's the only thing you need. And go to your local bank uh, or apply online. 
just Google right now. There are so many companies that are providing these applications online. Um, and also, of course, as we advised before, go to a local a, um, bank uh, for probably a faster response, uh, right? Um, I have two businesses, but only apply for one of them. Am I eligible to apply for both? The, the answer is it depends. If the two businesses are very closely related, you're only allowed to apply for one, but you could have put your numbers together so that you got enough money to cover both. But if you own two businesses that are not closely related, each business could apply independently. Wonderful. And I think, you know, um, well, they are giving more details about their businesses. But again, um, I want to I wanna thank uh, of course, the Minority Business Development Agency, especially to our partners at the Denver MBBA CARES Act Assistant Program. Thank you so much, Marvin, for making this uh, possible. To Stella as well, of course, that uh, join us. Uh, and to Stephen Denny with Innovative Business Advisors LLC for the wonderful presentation and for answering all these questions in such a clear way. Uh, and to all of you for taking the time to join us today via Zoom and via Facebook Live, please remember, share uh, this uh, video Video if you are joining us on Facebook and for those of you just that uh, register via Zoom, you will be receiving, of course, a copy of the video as well as all the materials that were presented during, um, during today's webinar. So we wish you all a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you.